Hello everyone. Sorry, it got it's it's still cold. So I got a little a little blanky. A little blanky. Okay. I rewound about 20 seconds. Um I will probably I'm going to talk a lot. So I'll probably stop it here. The end of the Reagan. And uh I, you know, I'm most replay Obama. Okay, my dogs are starting to grow, so starting to growl at each other, so I gotta yell at them. But let's get back into this. Good old boy. I hope he gets pussies. What is he guitar. eating there? That's it's a, a subway, dude. Just get a nice hoagie. subway, just like Jared. If he keeps eating those, he can get skinny <laughs> like gonna, Jared and fuck. Now children. he's gonna get some pussy. <laughs> he can be a kid fucking president <laughs> yeah. murdering guitarist. This guy's not done. He's got his chance. brand. He's still building his brand. He's got a shot. I mean, he looks young and healthy. It's funny to be fat and be like, I'm trying to get pussy. I could so you know the story I about him the gym. that he <laughs> had. There's the, these are the legends. He had uh, dinner at George Bush's house, uh, apparently like a couple of weeks before he shot the president. No. Look up John Hinckley and the Bush family. Their families were linked. The Hinckleys, I think, gave money to the Bushes or something like that. But apparently, Hinckley was a guest in a Bush house. I've heard this. An alarmingly short amount of time uh, before he shot President Reagan. And a very interesting thing about it is that George Bush was where when he was, when Reagan was shot. Do you know where George Bush was? When Reagan was, was shot? Texas. He was in Texas. There's this thing about Wasn't Texas. Wasn't he in Dallas? Was he in the book suppository waiting for Kennedy? <laughs> Kidding. And Kennedy was, got it, shot? That's what folks say. And he was at like, Texas is this place to like, like it It feels like. He was, skull, he was Skull and Bones. But, oh yeah, Skull and Bones. Very big. George Bush, and we'll get to him, but George Bush uh, was a power nerd and he was a guy who really hated the Reagan. Sh the shooter's father, John Hinckley Sr., was friends with George H.W. Bush. Yes. So he's like uh how's regular your, regular ha contributors to the Bush campaign. Yes. How's your son? How's your how's your boy John? Oh, I gotta tell you, kind he's troubled. Loser. He's troubled. Troubled is he? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe I should have a talk with him. He's like, hey, you want to fuck Jody Foster? No, he's like, so tell me what's going on. I'm just really into, uh, just really into, uh, I'm just really into Jody. Um, I'm just really in love with Jody Foster. I know that's weird. I'm in love with Jody Foster. Well, you know, son, you can't just sit on your on your keister. <laughs> you got to do something. I mean, what could you do to get her? You know, well, how should I get? I wrote her letters. I wrote hundreds of letters. Ah, uh, girl like that, she's famous. You got to do something, everybody, for everyone to see. Yeah, I'll tell you who she hates. Do something that's gonna make everybody see. I, I just mean, talked to Jody. You know yeah. who she really hates? She. <laughs> I mean, if you were to do something to, you know what they say? Now was 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 uh, was Lenin dead yet? Lenin was 1980. He was yeah, shot in December 8th. And when was Kennedy? Well, I mean Kennedy. When was Reagan shot? When was Lenin shot? Important dates. So Reagan after. was shot in 81. So right after um, fucking Chapman, David Chapman killed uh, Lennon. Yeah. And he said, the Beatles changed the world and I changed the Beatles. You know what that, you know that Chapman fellow said? I read <laughs> this in Rolling Stone magazine. He said, the Beatles changed the world and gosh, they sure did. <laughs> And I changed the Beatles. That's what he said. So I don't know. I mean, a fella could find someone yeah. who's really changed in the world. I don't know. I mean, anyone, you know, Stevie Wonder, Ronald Reagan. And uh, <laughs> Ronald Reagan. <clears throat> Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and maybe take, you know, have an effect on his life. I mean, what do you, you know? Anyway, so there's a uh, there's a video by Mr. Ballin. I covered it. Um, this isn't. Okay. I'm going to tell it now because they're talking about him and I'm scared that I will forget the Bush story uh, when I get to it because this video is going to probably be longer. Um, 
so the video that I was talking about to Mr. Ball and video and um, he talks about and of course it's a surprise ending it's I'm gonna be spoiling it but he talks about um, you don't know it's George HW Bush um, for people who don't know he was in the military he was in a plane during World War II that was flying over this island where the Japanese sorry the sides of my nose keep itching it's, I think it's dry so it's just itching um, they had to take out some communication towers or whatever the Japanese were, were on this island and they needed the island but they wanted to take out the communication towers first so it was like eight planes maybe went to do these bombing missions and they were like low altitude flying and a bunch of the people these planes were taken down some people died um, some were rescued by the Japanese but Bush was in a life raft or something and he was swimming and then he was eventually saved and it wasn't until after his presidency, I want to say in 2004, where this uh, this mission was declassified, and it was it had been classified for so long because everyone who was rescued, all the Americans who were rescued by the Japanese, were taken to this island, and they were tortured and then the Japanese figured in order to get their spirit they would start cannibalizing these people and they would keep them alive and they would just cut off hunks of meat off of these people and they had surgeons there that were going to keep you alive keep the meat fresh and uh, he had a bunch of his friends that had died um, from being tortured and then basically killed and eaten by these Japanese uh, soldiers and uh, I want to say something happened to the commander or whatever I want to say that he was eventually charged with with war crimes after but yeah what a horrific thing to find out 60 some or 50 some years later maybe about 60 years later where you find out that the mission you were on where you were shot down and you were almost captured by the Japanese those same Japanese captured a bunch of your other people and just tortured them and then ate them you know I don't care and I'm and I'm not saying that as an American like oh what happened to them was I'm saying remove the country make it Australia and Switzerland Switzerland's pretty evil so Switzerland soldiers captured these Australian soldiers and then just started cannibalizing and eating them still hits the same way it's still a terrible way to go you know but yeah that happened to him and he didn't know that's what the fate of these people until and I think he died in the 20 teens but still that's, that's a horrible thing well, yeah so <laughs> so Hinkley was like I don't know why you're talk, talking about talking about that but uh, I, I know what you're saying and so then he went to his bedroom and he looked in the drawer and he found a gun. He's like, where's this gun come from? I left something for you. I left <laughs> you a little something. You know what you have to do, son. Yeah, so <laughs> if you're the vice president and you have anything to do with the president being shot, you need to be in Texas. Because if, if there's any sort of like, we're, we have word that vice president, whatever. And then the governor of Texas is like, we're not extraditing. I'm like, it's the one place he might be able to hole up and maybe even stage a coup from. He's like, no, we're, we're the Republic of Texas now. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it could work. So Bush is in Texas and he refuses to come to Washington. It was a big deal because he just should have taken and taken over. But he refused. Okay, sorry, my, my phone was ringing. It was my sister. So, thought something might be happening. Back to the video. He uses to come to Washington. He's like, I'm not going, I'm not going to show up in the White House while the Gipper's fighting for his life. He yeah. made big statements about it. 
But he stayed away. He stayed. And it got really chaotic, as we all know. There's a great movie. How long was Reagan out? Um, a, I think a few days. But Nancy. So there's a, an amazing movie made by, by HBO called The Day the President Was Shot. Richard Crenna plays Reagan. And Richard Dreyfus plays Alexander Haig. And it's like a comedy in a way. But anyway, um, when Nixon was in the in the uh, I mean, when Re Reagan, you know, Reagan, they drove him to George. He, there's a hospital that's for the president. First of all, the, the cottage, the White House, they have a emergency room. They have everything there. But he was bleeding. He was spitting blood. <laughs> So, uh, Hinkley. and he, yeah, Hinkley. Hinkley got him. he got him. He fucking shot him in the armpit. <laughs> President of the limo. Shot him. And then he, and then he thought his bodyguard jumped on him. And then he said, I think you broke my rib. He, that's what he thought happened. He said, I, I think you broke my rib. So they, so they, they were going to go back to the White House to get him looked at. But then, uh, then he started spitting lots of blood. And so they went straight to George Washington Hospital, which was just a, a fucking homeless people out front. And the fucking limousine by itself just screeches up. And they brought a gurney, but the president said, I'm not going in on my back. You're not doing that. What? To me. It's true. And he walked in. Like, yeah, yeah. And this great, this, <laughs> there's a move, this movie, the best part is showing him. Hello. Walking by and you see this black guy go like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like just 80s black guys who are in front of a hospital like their wife's fucking having a baby. And they're smoking. And this the, that's the fucking president. And he's like, hello. And then he as soon as he got as soon as he got inside. Hey, he, fellas, how he, are you? Yes. He crumbled. And uh, they got him on the. Uh, on the gurney and they're going and he he came to at one moment because the nurse was holding his hand and he said does nancy know about you and me and then uh right before he went on a charming devil yes the the doctors right before anesthesia they said mr because they had to tell him he was the head of the fucking world and there was no he was in charge and they didn't know do we do we he's going under anesthesia and they said mr president we're going to put you under we have to get this bullet out of you and it was an exploding bullet. <laughs> Hinkley. So the doctors were all in danger. Hinkley. Hinkley. He was an exploding beast. bullet. What? And it was next to his heart. It was like leaning yeah. against his heart like this, the bullet. <laughs> and so the doctors said, we got to get this bullet out of you, so I'm going to put you under now. And he said, I hope that you guys are Republicans. And the doctor, who was not a Republican, said, Mr. President, today we're all Republicans. And he saved his life. But he was extremely, I mean, he was on death's door for mm. a few days. Now, the White House has Alexander Haig saying, I'm, I'm in charge here at the White House. I'm, I'm, he was the Secretary of State. He had yeah. no business saying that. He was like, by the, he made up this thing, by the success, laws of succession, I would be next. It's like, no, no, you're like 20th yeah. down. And meanwhile, at though at the hospital nancy's there with the chief of staff and there was a battle between the white house and the guys at the hospital so they needed to prove that reagan was functioning as a president so they needed a photograph and they needed him to do a piece of business so they had a, a the dairy bill some bill that's like for dairy subsidies that needed to be signed jackpot for those guys yes so they're, <laughs> they're like <laughs> Oh, we did it. <laughs> Hinkley, baby, I love you. <laughs> Hinkley! That's what it was. It was the milk people. The milk people, the milk people did the whole Big thing. milk, dude. For another 50. What if Hinkley's family were milk farmers? <laughs> I'm kidding. Haig, by the way, um, did a uh, thing where he didn't, I believe, he didn't want Bush anywhere near the White House for the time being. And then Bush showed up to like, take control because he's like you know i'm that and Hague's just like no i'm not handing over power <laughs> like he refused <laughs> cents on a fucking <laughs> carton of milk so nancy got enlisted and they said you need to do this and you need to handle them like you handled them in the movies and so she put makeup on his face and she like slaps ron you gotta wake up and they have and they leaned his bed up like this and she just kept trying to wake him up. And this is all in the movie done very well. But it's true. And they took a picture of him like, Duh. there's this picture of him 
like a really weird picture that I think did more harm than good. And then he signed. He signed. Uh, he the looks dairy great. Bill. Yeah, <laughs> he signed the dairy bill. It's a great pic. The one great picture is very rare to find of Reagan. He had like he had many operations. He was a very sick and dying old man. Yeah. He had some brain, like something taken off his brain or something. So he had had his half of his head was shaved, and at one and he was coming out of the airplane and he had a baseball cap on and he went like like oh, this. Oh no! And Nancy's going, don't! <laughs> like, oh, she's no. like horrified, and he because he thought it was <laughs> funny. Half his head is shaved. It's creepy. <laughs> I, I I saw that picture once. I never saw it again. Uh, so anyway, Reagan survived, obviously. And then that just was a massive lift. Yeah. I, I remember as a kid, my mother hated Reagan and I was just like, yeah, good, you know, good for you. You know, everybody was happy for me. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's really mad. <laughs> she's covered. Yes. Uh, so Reagan, I ran the guy rocket. I ran Contra happens. They were, uh, using there were still some hostages in iran and they were offering the iranians weapons in exchange for hostages and money and then they were going to use the money to uh fund the contras and um in el salvador yeah and it was all done by this guy oliver north north yeah uh, Colonel Oliver North. It was Reagan. It was dirty. It was a dirty Reagan thing. And Reagan said, I take responsibility for it because I'm not sure what I remember that I was told about this and we're looking into it. But make no mistake, it's my responsibility. Very Nobody does that anymore. Yeah. So he one thing about all that was no one went to jail except one person. And that was a Los Angeles drug dealer that had the nickname Freeway and his name was Rick Ross not the rapper the rapper took his name the rapper Rick Ross oddly enough used to be a corrections officer okay but Rick Ross was a he was a tennis player when he was growing up um, could not read, um, but he ended up having a connection in drugs, which came in through the CIA, and supposedly the FBI was also involved in turning a blind eye and allowing them to distribute drugs onto the streets of pretty much just like poor neighborhoods, which were more black but they did go to white i'm not you know um and then the revenue that they made those guys sent it back and freeway rick ross ended up the his connection turned and got him arrested <laughs> and so he had life in prison he ended up fighting it and he, he he beat the charge they they he did go to jail but they tried him uh they charged him three times for basically the same thing and uh, they were just like, yep, three strikes and you're out. And he was like, "This no, you, it's the same charge. So he ended up getting out. He had a life sentence. But Freeway Rick Ross, um, ended up um, revolutionizing the drug game. I don't know if he pioneered it, but he invented a thing called Ready Rock. And Ready Rock was what everyone now knows as crack cocaine. And he used to have little stash houses where you would come up to a window, you would get, you'd pay, and then you would go into like the next door building, the next door home and you could get your drugs there i think you got your drugs from the first house you went to the second house and the second house was set up for you to use your drugs so that you weren't on the street and it kept attention away from everything like that and he had them all over he had them like on every corner it was like a mcdonald's 
and he was making a, over a million dollars a day back in the 80s selling this, selling Ready Rock, because it was, you know, he had places where you could shoot up and other places where you could smoke, and it was, if he could sell you what was called Ready Rock, crack cocaine, you would smoke it, and the, the high was like a 15-minute trip, they say. I don't know, honestly. I'm just going by what others had said. And it's about a 15-minute high, and then you're back out on the streets because you need to find more money to chase that high again. And so he pioneered all that. He's uh, out of jail and actually is involved in... I I want to say he's involved in uh, legalized um, cannabis, marijuana. Um, but I don't know how big of a role he has because I don't know his parole status. If he's out of parole uh, or off parole or, or not, I'm not exactly sure. He did that and that kind of got him through it. And it made people believe that he was really looking into it. And then they pinned it all on this guy who I remember his hearings was a big, it was the biggest deal since, since Watergate. I ran Contragate. That's what they, it was the first thing that they gate, that they said gate about. And um, Oliver North was, he said, I dumb they, thing that he said, to somebody everybody. pitched the, somebody pitched this idea to me of the missiles. And then yeah. the many, and he said, I thought it was a neat idea. <laughs> and when everybody heard him say that they, it became plausible that this fucking dummy did. He just was stupid and crazy yeah. and that he did it. He later ran for governor of Virginia as a Republican. Might be West Virginia, I'm sorry. But Chuck Todd, who was the that lieutenant that sent the tape to yeah. Lyndon Johnson's son-in-law, who was thought to be the next great, he was supposed to be the next Kennedy, but he had a bad coke habit. <sighs> but But he was cool enough to be a senator. He was senator from I think West Virginia for years and he just didn't care anymore. So there's another great documentary about called The Perfect Candidate and it's a really great, um, it's a documentary about him running against Oliver North. Decided after all this shit had happened, he's gonna run. And it teaches you something about presidential politics. That's why I'm bringing it up. So Chuck Todd was a Democrat. He's like one of these guys you have now, you know, just a machine Democrat. Like there's a scene in the documentary where a reporter asks him, what do you think of uh, furlough programs in prisons? And he goes, what? I don't, I didn't, I didn't make a, I didn't say anything about, I haven't said anything about that. <laughs> he goes, well, what, what do you think about it? He goes, I've never, I haven't changed, I haven't changed my position on, uh, I'm, 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 I have a good, very good record on crime. And he goes, I'm just asking your opinion. Yeah. And he goes, well, I, 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 I appreciate the work that everybody has, has done. And he walks away. <laughs> and the guy's like, I can't even get an opinion out of this guy. Yeah, that's who's running, right? He's a tool. Yeah. And he's the Democrat. And then Oliver North, he announces his candidacy in a ch black church, all black ladies. And he's this notorious guy. Mm -hmm. And he says, he says, I've made terrible, terrible mistakes in my life. And you don't hear the black him. women, oh! Yeah, just, don't forgive him. Oh. <laughs> and he goes, and I'm a bad man. I've been a bad man. But there's one thing I love, and that's the people of West Virginia. And he starts crying. Oh, and my God. Just, and they just <laughs> love him. They love him. And he's winning the fucking, he's going to be a senator. senator. Yeah. It's a big deal. And then right at the end of the documentary, Clinton, who is just sweeping the country, comes in and spends like two days just going, you got, you, you know, Chuck Todd is the only man in this. And he just, and the black women love Clinton and he, he put him over the top. Okay. Reagan gets old. He gets Alzheimer's while he's in office. Nancy Reagan very openly talked about this once he was dead because Alzheimer's became her yeah. issue. And so she didn't mind giving his legacy away because it was more important to take care of the disease. So she gave us some great stories. One of them was that she was at um, the white, she was always at meetings and he, he told a funny story. Hey. And then <laughs> ate some chicken <laughs> and then he told it again. Oh no. Told it twice. And everyone was there, Ed Meese or whoever the guys in, and she said in his presence, do you guys see this? 
Yeah. Does anybody gone. like? Do we see what's happening here? Because she was really concerned. Yeah. They're like, no, no, no. He's so great. they started having meetings about it, and there's a great story. Reagan's doctor, which you can look it up, um, decided it was time to uh, to talk about it. He examined Reagan, and then he went to Reagan's ranch in California, and Reagan was chopping wood. He his body never gave up on him. He was as fucking strong as a piece of oak. He was chopping wood in a red flannel. You could just see this, you yeah. know, on his ranch. And the doctor comes up and he says, uh, he says, Mr. President, I got an issue. He says, some of us think that you might be losing your mental capacities. And right now you're okay, but you're declining. And I need to know what to do if I perceive that, you, because I can't talk to you once you lose your mind. Yeah. We can't have this conversation maybe in a year or so i won't be able to have this conversation with you because you won't be cognizant so while you're still okay and i think you are i need to ask i need instructions from you what do i do when i believe that you left the earth and reagan just took it as a piece of business he took off his leather gloves and he said well uh speak to nancy and speak to the chief of staff and uh the the head democrat the speaker the however is the number one Democrat, get them in a room and make a committee and tell them I'll do whatever they say. And so that didn't end up happening. Yeah. The, the second time he won the presidency was a moment for me too as a kid because he won and it was just this bah, dah, 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 that every time a president won and Nixon, you know, this whole thing. Yeah. And, and then when Reagan won the second time, they, he didn't, he wasn't with balloons he was in a hotel room, and footage you can find of him and they cut to all these Republicans cheering and they cut to him and Nancy on a couch watching on a TV, holding hands, and they look really upset. They're just sitting there and, he, and he's literally going like this. And it was this, it may have been performative, but the signal was, I got I have to do it. It's my duty, but I'm an old, I don't want to do it. This, this is a grave responsibility. Yeah. He took it seriously, and he was frowning when he when he learned that he won. And that was a that was a big character moment. Yeah, by an actor, of course. But nonetheless, it was a big yeah. deal. A lot of it's a lot of it's acting. A lot of these guys. Yes, and that's uh, that's Reagan. And then Bush ran against Mike Dukakis. This is where I'm starting to become somewhat cognizant. I You're was starting to okay, yeah. How I don't. I, you? No, no, no. It, I don't remember. I barely remember Clinton. Bush Clinton is like the first election I remember being like, yeah, fuck. That's Clinton. amazing to me. That's yeah. Amazing. So uh, I'm gonna stop it here. I wet it. I, I wet it. I wet it go a well longer. I let it go a little longer because I wasn't talking as much. Um, so I was born in '79, and. Um, Carter was president. Don't really remember much of Reagan. Near the end, I do. Um, vaguely remember George H.W. Bush. I remember, read my lips, no new taxes. And he meant it. Unfortunately, he had to raise taxes or, and it, it, that turn it, that destroyed his career. Um, Clinton swept up. Clinton is the first president that I, I remember talks going to my Nana's house and having uncles talking to my sister Angie who it was uh, like the first time she could vote and and so they were like you know who do you like and I remember she liked Ross Perot and then she liked Clinton and she it was like she really took it seriously I only I knew Ross Perot but I remember him from the debates as a can I talk can I can I talk can I talk can I, can I talk can I talk can I talk and I thought he was an oilman uh, he since has passed. I think he he died in maybe mid two thousands. Um, 
and some say that he hurt Bush's uh, second go around because he did take a lot of his votes. You know, I don't know. Um, it's possible. Certainly not going to doubt it. But Clinton came in playing the saxophone on the Arsenio Hall show, and it was just like, okay, all right, this is uh, this is clearly a younger fella. And I remember Bill Clinton being asked about marijuana. I smoked, but I didn't inhale. And I was like, I've never smoked marijuana. I was, a, I was a kid, I've never smoked, but I would certainly know that inhaling is part of it, much like smoking cigarettes. So, interesting. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, Mr. CK call, oh. So, that's kind of, you know, what I remember. But, None of that matters now. We're going to end this video here. And I've got to get something warmer on because it is still chilly. So, there's a thanks button. You can donate to the channel. You don't have to. All donations are appreciated. You can uh, request things. Uh, if you've donated, you request something, it moves to the top of the list. You can still request things. If you don't donate, it just takes longer to get to. Um, oh, yeah. Subscribe if you haven't, that helps um, if you're interested in the channel. I don't know why you'd want to watch my videos and not subscribe. That's weird. And then the last thing is hit the thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video, that helps me. It uh, tells the worthless YouTube uh, workers who I'm hoping are accidentally falling off a cliff right now that you like my videos. So that helps me. And until next time, have a good day, have a good night.